Richard, and uh, welcome everyone to Coffee Talk. Um, we're here again after another weekend of marching band, and it's Monday, and we, we do have our coffee. Whoops, there we go. Yes, yes, there we it do. appears. <laughs> Got to watch those virtual backgrounds. So, uh, Richard, what's uh, what's kind of your one thing this morning? Well, Randy, what I'd like to talk about for just a couple of minutes is this whole idea of timing. But as soon as I say, you know, timing or getting your group in time, so the sound reaches the audience at the same time. So every part of your group reaches the audience at the same time. People immediately start thinking about field placement and, and uh, am I watching, am I listening? I'm gonna talk about it from a little bit different perspective today and that's uh, from the perspective of being a drum major. Um, I think that a lot of times drum majors get um, put in a little bit of an awkward position depending on uh, if they're on the center podium or if they're on the outsides, maybe around the 35 yard lines or 30s or something like that, in terms of what do I do with my hands to help my band stay in time. So here's um, just a couple of simple suggestions that we've all probably heard before, but just some reminders, because I'm noticing this this season. First of all, the drum majors need to be in time together. All right, so if you're going off the center podium, drum major, the people on the outside need to be aware, okay, I have uh, brass over here that are about to play a feature, and I'm just using this as an example. All right, so yes, I wanna be with the center drum major, but I also know that our brass are in a position where they're gonna tend to be a little bit late when they come in, and I wanna help get them, get them in time. So maybe a few beats before that, I may look at the brass and do a little cheat and maybe even bring them in just a tiny bit early, just a hair early. Or I may remind my brass players, and that you know that's tough to do for some drum majors, but I would remind my players too that if this is where I am, I'm with the center drum major and you guys have to be right on my hands or just slightly ahead, all right? But I think a lot of drum majors just realize that they can conduct with what they hear or with the center, you know, we always say uh, center podium drum major, watch the center snare's feet, right? But that means that the, the drum major on the center podium has to stay right with the <laughs> center snare's feet. And that doesn't always happen. And then it goes out from there, okay? So just remember if you have drum majors that are struggling a little bit to help you with time, okay, they have to constantly be aware of where they're getting their time, if they're getting it from the, the drum major, or if everything moves over to the side and another, another drum major takes control, okay, we gotta make sure that they're uh, in sync and that they understand their responsibilities. Do I lay back here? Do I push ahead a little bit? But that can make a huge difference if your drum majors are aware of what they need to do in specific situations to help with tempo. And I know, um, I hope none of that was confusing. Um, but I, I do think it's really, really important as I'm seeing more and more groups struggle and I watch the drum majors and they're at completely different tempos. All right. So we got to be really, really careful of that. That's, that's terrific information. What, what comes to mind for me about that is basically some rehearsal practices. And we all know that we're rehearsing to develop muscle memory. And that's true with drum majors too. So if their rebound is so thick in other words, there's a lot of rebound in their pattern. The tendency is going to be for the ensemble to play behind. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going to react and almost play with the rebound. And the other piece of that is the location of the metronome. If the, if the metronome, and I've talked to a lot of groups about this, who consistently put their metronome on the 50-yard line on the back sideline mm -hmm. and leave it there, right. that's problematic, right? Because those pulse centers do change, just like Richard's talking about. Sometimes the pulse center could be on side one or side two. Maybe the battery is involved in a particular moment. Maybe mm -hmm. they're not. Can we listen to the battery on side two if they're on side one in front of us? Probably not. So there's all of those kinds of considerations and muscle memory comes into play. If we always have that metronome on the back sideline, the drum major is gonna to tend to be behind sometimes because they're hearing the met late. Right. So I would strongly suggest a metronome attached to their ear and then taking the long ranger or the speaker and roaming with the battery, putting it very soft behind that center snare so they can hear it. And, and not using it as a crutch. That really helps with weaning of the metronome too. Um, a lot of groups experience problems by just doing the eight and eight, they shut it off. And then the kids, you wonder why the kids are dragging through moments and, and the percussions perhaps staying on the top of the beat. So it, that, can, that can help develop good muscle memory as opposed to bad. 
So. Yeah, and I think what you said, Randy, about um, having the um, amplified met on the back 50 is really valid because uh, so many times when I'm working with groups, I will watch the drum majors when the metronome is back there, and there they say, well, I'm conducting right with the met. But think about it for a second. If you're conducting exactly with the Met, are you helping the rest of the group be in time? Or are right. you actually slow? Right? Because of the reaction time. Okay, especially if it's all the way back on that back sideline. And what's that doing to the people that are out there that are count counting on you to stay right on top of things so they know when to come in? So I think uh, that point you make is super valid. Yeah, and I think the reason why we say this is because we hear groups that might sound really good but they can't put any of those sounds together right. in time. Right. And that's really the first battle when you're talking about a hundred yard stage. So hopefully this is helpful information for you and uh, we'll see you next week on Coffee Talk. Thanks everybody.